from Midtown Manhattan. The Cube's live coverage of Big Data NYC, a Silicon Angle Wikibon production. Made possible by Hortonworks, We Do Hadoop, and Wham Disco, Hadoop Made Invincible. And now your co-hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon with Jeff Kelly. We're here at Big Data NYC, which is our event that we are holding uh, this week. This is our third day. We're down here on 6th Ave at the Warwick Hotel right across the street from the Hilton where Hadoop World and Stratacomf are going on. Adam Fuchs is here. He's the CTO of Squirrel, a longtime Cube guest, an individual who's done a number of great spots with us. Uh, we did one at the Wikibon uh, offices, which we're going to talk a little bit about today because that was the subject of one of his uh, breakout talks. Adam, welcome back to the Cube. Thanks, Dave. Good to be here. Yeah, so you evidently had a packed house. We were talking to some of the folks at the Cube party last night, and evidently there was standing room only to your session on uh, Big data lessons learned at the at the NSA. Everybody wants to wants to hear about that. Now, of course, you couldn't you know give the real you know inside scoop, but still, you provided I'm sure frameworks as you did in the video that, that we did with you. Um, so how would how did it go? Yeah, so I think everybody was expecting me to divulge some secrets. So most people were disappointed, uh, but no, it was, it was definitely a packed house. I think we counted something like 400 people, and which uh, I don't know probably violates fire code. But. Um, good session, a uh, lot, of, lot of interest afterwards, uh, so I think people are really uh, you know, getting into big data security, right, try to, try to fix all that stuff. Well, it's certainly been a, a talk of this conference, and it really started to escalate, I don't know, maybe about a year ago, but really started to escalate kind of around last summer, I noticed. Um, we saw you at, uh, at uh, Hadoop Summit, uh, and the, the talk around security really started to, to grow. Now maybe that's because everybody really started to have some kind of solution to bolt on to their existing infrastructure. You guys always make the case that you had to start from scratch. So, And that's really what Accumulo was all about. It was developed inside the NSA. Somehow you guys got it open sourced, which is... Yeah, uh, that, was, that was quite an effort. Amazing, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, funny thing though is that uh, open sourcing uh, software from government and from you know behind the, uh, the other side of the wall, it's not that hard. The hard part is actually continuing to participate in the project afterwards. Right, so we actually went through about a year of policy writing in order to just you know, get the right structures to maintain uh, that, that participation from folks that are you know, actively working on you know, top secret missions and still Right, because they want to, to put them in a closet and no, right. not let them out. Right? Yeah. So, so there have been a few projects that have kind of been thrown over the fence, stuck on GitHub, and yeah, there's a lot of good tech out there that nobody will, I don't know, know well, it comes, it comes I, from we talk a lot here. I mean, when we started Wikibon, we had, you know, I, I said earlier today, we were inspired. One of the many inspirations was Don Tapscott's book on Wikinomics, put it out there, and great things will happen, people will pick up on it. Now, again, the government sometimes doesn't want that to happen, but the flip side of that is innovation happens when you open source things. So. Yeah, um, you know, and as a startup, it's actually pretty tricky for us to decide you know, where do we where do we do open source and where do we do closed source. Yeah. At some point, you got to figure out how you're going to make money, but also how you're going to innovate and how you're going to uh, really rally a, a larger development community than just your own team. Right. Uh, so now you're also seeing some others hop on the Accumulo bandwagon, not necessarily just through Squirrel, but also say, hey, you know, Accumulo, yeah, we'll support. Q and, you know, yeah, works through that. a small company like uh, Cloudera, yeah. right? you may have heard of them. <laughs> yeah, they just announced the support yeah. for that. Hortonworks is uh, very active in the development as well. Uh, so we're getting a lot of great players out there. Of course, there's there's still a huge amount of funding that comes in through uh, government contracts. Uh, if you go you know, pay attention on the lists, you'll see lots of people chiming in that have various projects on Accumulo. Uh, we're trying to bring that much more in, into the uh, the private sector outside of government space, uh, get a lot more participation from folks in regulated industries uh, like healthcare, banking. Uh, it's huge, huge potential for solving the security problems that are out there. So talk a little bit about some of the lessons learned. I mean, again, I know you can't divulge super secrets, but things around scale and just, you know, security practices in general and, and, and dealing with, you know, diverse data sets and, you know, utilizing a, a key value store. What are some of the things that you talked about in your in your session, and we talked about in the, the video that we did together. Yeah, so the, the core axiom behind all of these lessons learned is that 
or the application development is key for innovation uh, in any kind of organization. And by that I mean, you know, if you can take an idea and encapsulate that in an application that then can be used and can be uh, adopted by a large organization, uh, that application is or that nugget of innovation. Uh, the more you can do that, the more rapidly you can build applications, the faster you can innovate. So a lot of these lessons learned, we're talking about you know, how do we avoid barriers to innovation. Um, and you know, the, the core of the Hadoop community is really focused on that as well. So you know, you've got Hadoop pushing for scalability as a very a central tenant of the overall infrastructure. Uh, you, know, you do that because you don't want to hit a point somewhere in the adaption curve where you know, you're not going to have uh, the ability to scale beyond that. Right? So that ability to just continue to scale seamlessly from start to finish, that's one of those core ideas. What kind of questions did you get from the audience? I mean, that, that you can share with us. Yeah, so everybody. <laughs> or that you can answer. <clears throat> every, everybody's interested in, you know, what's the difference between Accumulo and HBase? Right, we get a, a lot of questions on that. Oh, okay, interesting. Okay, well, let's talk about that. I mean, you and I have talked about that, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, but it's worthwhile re reviewing. Right, so um, the two projects actually started around the same time, although Accumulo was a, a closed source project inside of uh, the government uh, for the first few years of its life. Um, it's, it's an interesting discussion for two reasons, and it's, you know, one of those is, is that uh, the two projects actually have pretty different focuses, um, despite being both based off of the Google Bigtable design from the beginning. So, you know, Cumulo started out really trying to focus on very heavy ingest rates, uh, and as such, you can see a lot of uh, design, design decisions made, both in the client libraries and the, uh, the networking code and the, uh, you know, the compaction algorithms that are uh, backing all of the performance on the server side um, versus you know, HBase, which very much had a focus on uh, providing uh, low latency query response times. And you know, certainly in, in 2011, it was ahead on, on most of those metrics. Um, so you kind of see a co-evolution of the two projects, but now since they're sitting side by side in the Apache Software Foundation, you get actually a lot of code sharing and a lot of idea sharing between the two projects. So I think it's actually very healthy to have the two projects sitting side by side. Um, now, you know, our, our position at Squirrel is that Accumulo still has those core security and uh, scalability features that distinguish it, certainly in all of the use cases that, that we're using it. Well, the race is on, right? So the you, race you, is you get people talking about putting right. you know, cell level security into HBase. You, you guys have said, okay, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool, but uh, see if it performs like you need it to perform. And yeah, I'd, you know, I'd love to have some point in the future where we can take our Squirrel software and port it over to HBase and you know, have that not be an issue anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah, you would love to do yeah, that, right? The, of course. The yeah. architecture is great underneath yeah. the, the big table design and, and the systems built off of that. Um, a lot of strengths. Uh, you know, the battle shouldn't be amongst you know, the, right. the minute differences between the two systems. Yeah. Um, right now, the security kind of makes it a, a pretty big, a big differentiator. Well, so kind of a related question. We, we talked earlier, earlier today with uh, Jack Norris from Mapar, and, and he made a point about, uh, you know, in the Hadoop space, it's pretty much, pretty much Hadoop is, is, has uh, emerged really as that de facto uh, standard for a you know, big data platform. Of the foundational level, anyway. But the NoSQL world is much more up in the air. There's just he put up a slide, I think, in one of his keynotes with I don't know how many logos of different NoSQL databases. So obviously, uh, Squirrel is betting on Accumulo. But in your opinion, what is it going to take for you know one or two or three of these NoSQL databases to kind of win the market, if you will? I mean, or, or maybe is the premise of my question right? Can they all survive? How do you see this uh, kind of uh, playing out? And what are some of those keys that are going to differentiate the? the NoSQL da databases that do thrive from the ones that kind of fade away. Yeah, well, it's almost certain that the ultimate NoSQL database doesn't exist yet, right? <laughs> but what we're seeing is that there's, there seems to be some consolidation of the various systems into maybe four different categories. You've got your uh, hash-based key value mm -hmm. stores. You've got your sorted key value stores, which also have some columnar capabilities. Uh, you've got document stores like MongoDB, which have mm -hmm. the most market share now in the NoSQL mm -hmm. space. and then um, you know, I'd also throw in a lot of the graph stores into that category as well. Um, but if you start looking across them, you can, you can bring in some defining characteristics of NoSQL that sort of separate it from SQL. 
uh, things like low latency, high concurrency, denormalized models of data. Um, all of those elements, you know, we see commonalities across all of the different systems. One of the things that we're trying to do with Squirrel is to, to minimize the, the uh, you know, that interface uh, perspective as to you know, choosing which database to use under the covers. So we're trying to bring in document features and graph features, storing those on a Cumulo side by side with a sorted key value, uh, which gives you a, a huge, huge feature set. And from the perspective of supporting that low latency, uh, high concurrency uh, query interface you know, with the denormalized models, um, we can do pretty well across all of those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and in terms of, uh, you mentioned earlier, uh, partnership with Cloudera, and uh, so what, what's the impact of a, a partnership like that in terms of, do you see as the Hadoop world uh, kind of and the NoSQL world collide a little bit more and uh, you're seeing more support from people like Cloudera uh, and others, how is that impacting uh, the kind of the NoSQL market? Yeah, so from, from us, uh, from our perspective in particular, uh, you know, we have a lot of different areas where we need to focus our development. Um, some of those are on things like uh, security and the security ecosystem, building in uh, policy engines and ties into identity and access management systems. Mm -hmm. Huge amount of work over there. Some of them are in uh, doing analytic layers and, and making sure that we have uh, you know, things like documents and graphs and live updates and uh, graph neighborhood searches and mm -hmm. maybe sketching algorithms and approximations. Um, and then there's sort of the, the other part, which underlies everything, which is uh, infrastructure, core infrastructure and, and enterprise readiness. Um, I'm pretty excited about folks like Cloudera coming in because they're going to be contributing to these open source uh, sub-projects, uh, things like replication across uh, you know, multiple data centers uh, that, that really you know, solidify that core. And, um, you know, we... We need to have that. Right. We can do that ourselves. I'd, I'd much rather focus on these other elements and partner mm -hmm. on you know keeping that stuff in the open source, you know, mm -hmm. that core open source database. Yeah. So really, really focus on what you do best and what your where your real value proposition is, and kind of let uh, partner rather than try to try to do it all yourselves. Yeah. In other yeah. words, nobody yeah. can succeed doing everything. Yeah. Can succeed doing everything themselves. Um, so let's geek out a little bit. So what are some of the, 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 the innovations you're working on now that you can share, to the extent that you can share that you're excited about, uh, things you're, you're looking to add to uh, Squirrel Analytics, the platform, and accumulate the database? Yeah, so one of the things that we put in our latest release is an ability to do uh, online aggregation in a document model. So you can have a, a field in a document where you can update that field, and the effect of updating that field is to add uh, to the value, to contribute to the value that was there before. Right? And this is a pretty simple concept, right? Maybe you read the previous value, you increment it, you write it back. Um, we're doing it in a different way. And Accumulo under, under the covers has this thing called the iterator tree, uh, which basically supports doing that type of increment operation, giving consistent results. So you always get you know, the same response to, uh, to your query but doing it in a way that doesn't involve read, modify, write. So if I'm randomly updating a whole bunch of values throughout my database and I have to read the previous value of each of them to do that random update, uh, all of my operations are going to turn into random IOPS in my core storage, which tends to be spinning disk. Right? Right. You don't want to do that. Right? <laughs> you want to batch things up in micro batches and, and basically uh, be able to do, do the aggregations efficiently. So we're, we're taking that, we're exposing that at a pretty high level inside of the documents. Um, part of what we're, gonna, what we're working on is really extending that uh, to where it's, you know, you can have weights on graph edges that have those types of, of aggregate functions, uh, but also extending the types of aggregate functions that we support. Uh, so a lot of people are really interested in uh, monoids and sketching algorithms. Uh, mm -hmm. Google published a paper on hyperlog log cardinality estimation. <laughs> just just we, a little easy Sunday reading. <laughs> let, me, let me go a little bit. So uh, basically, you know, limited memory footprint, uh, but uh, you know, get a, a pretty good estimate for uh, things like counts across huge data sets. Mm -hmm. um, so if I take 10 petabytes of data and I want to figure out what's in that, 
um, I, I can have a series of sketches that, that tell me what's in that, and I can store those sketches in a much smaller footprint than the original data, as long as I can keep them up to date online. And that's what we're really building in uh, you know, to our gra document and graph models. You were talking before about some of the, the problems with spinning disk. Do you see the advent of flash memory changing the, some of the unnatural acts that you had to do as a, as a developer? Um, and, and actually maybe obviating some of the cool things and tricks that you used? That's, that's actually something that we've looked at a lot over the last uh, several years. You know, is, is this data going to be, or is this uh, database technique going to be obsolete? Um, and generally, if you look at the data structures that are optimal for storing things on uh, something like an SSD, uh, they're, they're pretty similar to the log structure merge tree technology that backends Accumula. So you still want to do batching, right? Because a lot of that has to do with uh, synchronization and uh, you know, how, do you, how do you efficiently use your threads and your processors. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and it also has to do with uh, how do you efficiently compress data? Right? So how do you reduce the relative entropy between two different data elements? So grouping things into batches, uh, doing a log structure merge tree, uh, still going to be efficient in, in the uh, SSD and in-memory world. Uh, and uh, we're pretty excited because it's going to give us you know, 10 times better performance as yeah, well. Yeah, so the techniques you've, you've chosen have legs, and it's going to give you better performance. And the, the gap, what gives you confidence that the gap you have now in terms of security, scalability, and all the other benefits of, of Accumulo that you can maintain that gap as all this other competition comes into the marketplace. Well, I, I don't think those um, I don't think those elements of the database really change. I mean, you still have to worry about how do you model that security, how do you keep track of the uh, you know the, the fine grained attributes that affect who can see an individual record. And I think in the domains that we're talking about, um, you know, we're we're pretty far ahead. Uh, so because it's fundamental to what you've developed. Uh, it is fundamental, yeah. fundamentally, yeah. I mean, in-memory techniques are great, but you still have to have the right algorithms, and you know, the, the data-centric security model in general uh, is still the right one. Yeah, great. All right, Adam, thanks again for coming onto the Cube. Always a pleasure to listen to you uh, get deep. <laughs> and uh, check out the Chalk Talk uh, that, uh, that Adam did. It's uh, called uh, Big Data Lessons Learned at the NSA. If you go to Squirrel's website, you can see it. You got a little, little, you got to give your name, address kind of thing, or you can just Google it and you'll find it somewhere, but it's really good. So, uh, so check that out. You got a few videos up there, actually, that, that you did that were yeah, really helpful. We've, so we've done four so far. We yeah, it was, it was awesome. Got to so kick off some more. Really learned a lot doing those, and, uh, and I go back every now and then and review them, and they're, and they're quite useful. So for the practitioners out there that just want some you know, good advice on how to structure things, it's uh, worth hitting the Squirrel website or, like I say, hit the... Uh, Hit the Silicon Angle uh, YouTube page. Okay, Adam, thanks very much for coming on. Uh, Jeff Kelly, thank you for hanging in there with me. And uh, this is theCUBE, we're right back. We're live from NYC Big Data, New York City. We'll be right back. <laughs>